So I'm a radio astronomer. I work at the National Center for Radio Astrophysics in Pune, and uh, I primarily use observational techniques to probe uh, galaxy formation and evolution, looking at the earliest galaxies uh, in the universe. And in addition to this, I use again astronomical techniques to try to understand, uh, try to test whether the fundamental constants of physics might change with time and uh, with cosmological time or on time scales of say billions of years. So we've known for a while, for about 20 years now, uh, using uh, optical te techniques mainly, that the star formation activity increased steadily from around say 13 or so billion years ago up to about 11 or so billion years ago. And for about uh, 11 billion years ago to about 8 billion years ago, the star formation activity in the universe was approximately constant. And then after that, there was a precipitous decline in the star formation activity. And today, the star formation activity in the universe is about a factor of 10 smaller than what it was at the peak epoch of star formation in the universe. And the question has been, of course, you know, one, why does the star formation activity plateau? And two, why does it drop? What we did was that we tried to, to uh, measure the atomic gas content of galaxies in the early universe, with the idea being that the reason stars form is because gas converts into stars. Gas basically cools, atomic gas cools, forms molecular gas, the molecular clouds then fragment, they collapse under their own gravity, and they form stars. And that's been hard. It's been hard because the main probe of atomic gas in the universe is what is called the 21 centimeter line of hydrogen. It's what is called a spectral line, which means that it happens because of a quantum mechanical transition within atomic hydrogen, where the electron goes from one state, one energy state, to another energy state, with the emission of a small amount of radiation, a, a, a very tiny amount of, radi of, of energy, if you like. GMRT was actually the, built to try to detect this transition from galaxies even earlier on in the universe, but it wasn't possible to do this because the galaxies were small, the amount of emission was too small to pick up. <clears throat> so what we did was that we used a, a technique called stacking, where we basically combined the 21 centimeter signals from a large number of galaxies, about 10,000 galaxies, and averaged the signals together with the idea that uh, by doing this, we would get the average properties of this galaxy population. So although we couldn't detect the individual signals from these galaxies, we could detect the average signal. And that showed us that the amount of atomic gas in these galaxies about eight or nine billion years ago was much, much larger than in corresponding similar galaxies today. And they had far fewer stars. They had, they had more atomic gas than stars. And what seems to be happening is that atomic gas gets converted into molecular gas and then to stars. The reason that the star formation activity drops uh, from our observations appears to be that there's not enough, the, the, the atomic gas is being eaten up by the process of star formation. And there's not enough gas now which is falling onto these galaxies, which is accreting onto these galaxies to continue to, to keep the reservoir of atomic gas you know, sufficiently full so that you can keep forming stars. So the fine structure constant uh, is an example of what is called the fundamental constant of physics. It's, it's a quantity which, uh, whose values, whose value in this case, is not predicted by the theory that we have, but which has to be put in by hand. It has to be measured by, by experiment or observations and put in by hand. And the issue is that there's nothing in, in, the, in theory which tells us that these fundamental constants, like the fine structure constant, like the ratio of the proton mass to the electron mass, there's nothing that tells us in the theory that these constants have to be constant. They're parameters. That's one reason to actually go out and measure whether these quantities are fixed. The other reason to, to go out and look for changes in these quantities is that theoretical models which try to go beyond our current understanding of physics. So our current understanding is based on what is called the standard model of particle physics and general relativity. And attempts to unify these two theories uh, have a generic prediction that the fundamental constants should change with time. Now, the problem is that we don't know how they should change. Should they change you know, rap you know, rapidly on short time scales or on cosmological time scales? These theories, the, the unification scale, the energy of unification is extremely high. It's about 10 to the 19 giga electron volts. And that is something that we are never going to be able to get to with the, in the lab. The, the specifics we're trying to do is that we're trying to look for changes in the fine structure constant and the proton-electron mass ratio with cosmological time 
by oh, on time scales of say 10 billion years or so, between three and 10 billion years. And we're looking for extremely small variations in these fundamental constants. And we're looking for evidence for, for change over here. And the way we do this is that we try to, to find molecular gas in these high redshift galaxies. And we know the spectral lines from, the, from this molecular gas, you know, the line frequencies. If you can find two separate spectral lines, uh, ideally from the same uh, molecule or atom, and which has different dependencies on the fine structure constant, uh, it turns out that if the fine structure constant changes or if a fundamental constant changes, the frequencies of these spectral lines would change. They would not be the same as they are in the lab today. So what we do is that we go out and measure these lines as accurately as we can, and then compare their relative frequencies, the ratio one frequency to the other, and test whether that's the same as in the lab or not. That's the game, basically. <laughs>